Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Galvin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If that's something that you are interested in, please make sure to subscribe now. Hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that would really help me know that you like to see more contents like this without further ado you guys let's jump into the video all right okie dokie welcome back to another another day of discussion and i know i cannot wait for monday for this upload because um it's been a week since the last time i actually uploaded one and i really find it um this video topic this discussion very timely because i am going to renew my con my contract my my what's this what should i call this my license for acls and i want to share to you how i prepare myself for this upcoming um you know upcoming uh training of mine and as you all know and i probably know that a lot of you guys are taking the same thing taking the same training certificate from american heart association and this topic is definitely in line with uh their algorithm their protocols and all and i believe that's the same protocol that everybody all around the world the nurses all around the world the, the practitioners and providers are using so let this be your nursing study guide ngayon kung hindi mo pa napapanood if you haven't watched the very first the two uploads i created around um SVT and bradycardia, how to address them in a pre-arrest setting before the patient actually arrested. Mind you guys that this topic is during the arrest phase. That's why it's called cardiac arrest algorithm based on American Heart Association. So meaning arrest phase, meaning you've established that the patient is unresponsive. And then what? Uh, unresponsive, you, you check the pulse and all. And um, if there's no pulse, that's the time that you're going to proceed with giving um, high quality CPR. And if there's no pulse, but if there's a pulse, but this is just a brief review. If there's a pulse, but no breathing, no spontaneous breathing, no rise and fall of the chest, that's now the time that you're going to give rescue breathing. Tama, right? You still remember that. But just for the purpose of this discussion, we're specifically going going to discuss about your cardiac arrest algorithm yes like you see on your video right uh, on your screens right now so this is when the time let's discuss our discuss let's discuss let's start our discussion but before that um if you haven't checked out the other videos i created under the nursing educational cons uh nursing education where i could created hundreds if not thousands of videos related to nursing education i'll be providing the link on the description box or whenever the icon button pops out click the one out because i'll be providing that to you also i'm planning to really um update the previous discussion we had regarding svt and bradycardia and i'm planning to do it in this type of setting where i'm actually writing it down doing a live lecture to you guys while i'm recording my voice my recording i'm recording my you know my my penmanship instead of the nor the usual uh presentation i offered to you which is me doing like a slideshow or some something like that i just feel like there is a magic and there's like definitely a lot of, this could be a lot of this offers a lot of entertainment and you know uh, a live discussion means it's different you know what i mean but yes definitely today we're going to discuss about your cardiac arrest algorithm all right let's discuss let's start this discussion all right so like i said you've already in this type of uh in the arrest phase you guys you've already what established that the patient is unresponsive so meaning you have already established the un oh sorry let me just erase that one real quick you've already established that you have an unresponsive patient all right unresponsive patient that's the start of your arrest phase the moment you identify that you have an uh you establish that the patient is unresponsive ah wait a minute all right okay 
oh, I don't think that that's a good idea. All right. So that's that looks better. So the moment you identify that the patient is re- unresponsive and you need to give high quality CPR, the thing that it's just like the se- the the one that I said before, now is the time that you're going to be as a first responder, you're going to activate the code blue if you're in the hospital setting and if you're the pre in the pre arrest setting what you're going to do you will call for help you'll start high quality CPR and then you'll be the team lead when the the team arrives as someone to get the AED those are the pre arrest setting but in this particular scenario I'm going to teach you in the uh, hospital setting so you are the first responder and we know that in the arrest setting we actually have how many roles normally the standard um the the how many roles in the arrest phase in the responders in the code blue team so you have here one two three four five five uh uh five roles in the arrest phase and this is something that is very important for you to know about before we actually proceed to your um what's this on the actual arrest phase the process of delegation you guys plays a very important role in making sure that the exchange of information exchange of instructions and orders is flowing very well because in the last thing that you don't want to happen in the arrest phase when somebody like a patient arrested is miscommunication not doing closed loop um what's this closed loop um uh, what's this closed loop giving of instructions? Um, because you want to be clear, short and clear instructions are very important. And one way for you to know, and the best way to actually do that is making sure that everybody is on board, everybody knows what they're doing, um, the scope of their, uh, uh, the task that they, they have to do, and the requirement, and the, what's this, the, the task and the roles that they are, they, they're going to do on that. A specific um, scenario in this case in the patient being uh, uh, found uh, in the arrest phase okay so once you establish that the patient is unresponsive what the next thing that you're gonna do is to delegate if you're the first responder absolutely you will activate code blue and then you will start high quality CPR but for the purpose of this discussion I'm gonna give you what are the things that you need to delegate the the what's this the roles in the arrest phase of each providers and individual nurses because once you sorry for that okay Let's start so we have here the roles and what the process of delegation which is very important as i said earlier you have to delegate certain tasks to people. So in the normal ACLS protocol, we only have five, five major roles. Major, five major roles. Ah, I cannot, seems like I have a problem with five major roles in the ACLS arrest phase. All right. So we're going to discuss each role for you. I'm going to discuss each role for you. I'm going to give them your, um, I- I'm going to give to you their responsibilities. The first one is the compressor. Nurses, what does a compressor do in the arrest setting? This compressor plays a very important role in the ACLS arrest setting. So you have to tell your compressor to push hard Push hard and fast. More likely, you will hear that a lot of times in the ACLS um, uh, training. Push hard and fast. When I say push hard and fast, what is the compressions, the rate, and how many cycles are you go? How many cycles you are expected to do? So you have to do what? One hundred, approximately one hundred beats per minute. That is equivalent to 30 compressions. 30 compressions in five cycles. Is that clear? When you say push hard and fast, that is equivalent to that's the same way of saying 100 beats per push, uh, push hard and fast, do compressions unto 100 beats per minute. That is 30 compressions in five cycles. Mind you guys that the normal, the normal, 
what you call this? I'm just gonna put it. The normal, normal values tayo ah. Heartbeat of a person is in adult is what 100 to 120 beats per minute. So this is our target, you guys. All right. Next, what are the next thing that you have to tell your compressor? Allow full chest recoil. Anong rationale nito? What is the rationale? Why you have to allow full chest recoil? This is to allow the the continuous blood flow of the heart in and out of the heart. You just don't want to give. Um, you just don't want to give a lot of compressions without allowing chest full recoil. And this is the last thing that you have to tell your compressor is what to minimize. Oh, minimize interruptions. To up to how many seconds? Less than to less than or not more than 10 seconds. American Heart Association plays, uh, give emphasis to this thing, the interruptions between compression. You don't wanna uh, enter, you don't wanna, what you call this, you don't wanna um, uh, delay the compressions or have a, a more than 10 seconds of interval. When it comes to chest compressions, all right? The next role that we're going to talk about, so basically this is the role of your compressor. If you're going to delegate the compressor uh, compressor to someone, you will tell them this task. Push hard and fast up to 100 beats per minute, 30 compressions in 5 cycles, allow full chest recoil, and minimize interruption to less than 10 seconds. All right, those are the key roles of the compressor, which, it, which, by the way, as a team lead, you have to be aware of that and you have to give him clear and short instructions. All right, next thing that you're going to do is delegate the airway. Someone has to take care of the airway. The way we approach the, the arrest phase is by going through uh, CA, uh, CAB, CAB, Circulation Airway Breathing. All right. When it comes to your airway, you guys, what are the roles of the someone handling the airway? Okay. So basically, you just have to give two cycles every 30 compressions and avoid excessive ventilation. Let me write that down for you. Give, give, oh, let me change my pen color. Give two cycles. Of breath every 30 seconds thirty seconds of compression and then be be you have to be clear when you say avoid excessive ventilation back it why? The risk of what? The air going to the patient's stomach. You don't want to do that. All right? Instead of you giving the ventilation to the lungs, which is where it should be, you're giving it to the, to the stomach of the patient. You don't want to do that to your patients. So these are the two um, roles in the arrest setting. We're moving towards your monitor. Are you guys following? Very good. So, the one handling the monitor, what is the role of this person? You have, there's basically two. Two roles of the one being assigned to as the monitor. Change and administer shock as I ordered, as the team lead. All right? So, one, two... Three, four, five, six. Actually, th six. Let me correct myself. Six major roles. Someone as uh, uh, as the team lead. This is not the 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 team lead. Um, the team lead is not included in this one. Let me correct myself. It's actually six major. Someone has to play the leader. All right. So he is the one or she is the one who's gonna delegate these tasks. 
All right. So monitor. What does the monitor does? You have to tell your the one handling the monitor the defib change and administer shock. As I ordered. All right. Next. The next thing that you have to tell the monitor is to switch row with compressor every five cycles or when the compression or when the compressor feels tired to, ov uh, to overcome fatigue or to prevent fatigue. So next thing you need to do is switching rows. With compressor every five cycles is equivalent to two minutes. Every five cycles or whenever the compressor. feels tired have you tried actually doing chest compression to your to a patient who arrested oh my god it is so exhausting it's so tiring it takes a lot of you the next row that is going or that we're gonna discuss is the medication someone is going to be assigned to handle the acls medication this is pretty exciting all right, so we have here the medication. So what are you going to tell? Give and administer medication as I ordered. Giving medication as ordered. All right, so when you give this order, by the way, when you give this order to the, those person, what you're going to ha they have to repeat themselves to you. All right, that's what you call closed loop communication. Next thing is, the last one, aside from the team lead, is the recorder. Do that one more time. All right. Ang saya pag live, no? The recorder, what are you going to tell to the recorder? Record every important de uh, details like medications and prompt me every two minutes. Recording important details. Mm -hmm. Recording important details. Details like what? Like medication and prompt the team lead. Prompt the team lead and the team every two minutes. All right. So we're clear. So basically, these are the... Uh, five or six major roles in the ACLS arrest phase. So let me just put this all here. I hope we are, everybody is clear about that. Let me just put this all, uh -huh. let me just put this all here on the side. All right. Because we're going to do, we're actually doing this live you guys so if you want to take a screenshot at the end of this conversation at the end this, of this video you might do so again this is just uh uh this is uh i'm making a live reviewer for all of you guys okie doke so those once you you're done your process of delegation there's some key th uh key um take notes or takeaways important details that i want you to to be familiarized on all right so, uh, let me put that here. Uh, let's just say, uh, things to remember. 
Oh, 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 First one is, let me highlight that down so everybody can see. Things to remember. The first one is, whenever you see a sistole for the first time, What you will do? You have to double check by checking the leads. All right. This is to make sure that no leads were detached during the process of compression. When you see a systole for the first time, check the leads. All right. For confirmation. Next. What are the things that I want you to remember when doing your arrest phase? When you see organized rhythm, assess for pause. Organized rhythm. I want you to assess for pause. Pause. Very important. Okie doke. Because what does it do? What do I mean by this? Okay, let me give you a breakdown. When you see an organized rhythm, when you see an organized rhythm, and let me just put it here. Organized rhythm, organized rhythm, Plus, negative pulse. This is P-E-A. Remember that. Oh, sorry, sorry. That is why it is very important for you to check for pulse. When you see an organized rhythm... You have to assess for pulse every now and then. Why? Because it will determine what type of rhythm and what type of uh, what's the next step that you're going to do. When you see an organized rhythm but there's no pulse, you palpate the carotid, but the, the, the carotid pulse, but there's no, no pulse in there, no indication of pulse. That is called PEA. When you see an organized rhythm, Plus, and, it means and, positive pulse, this is the time that you will what? Call for ROS. Your patient arrived to return of spontaneous circulation. That is, the ver that, that is why it is very important for you to remember this thing, you guys. If you check for again, if you check for pulse, if you check, if you see an organized rhythm in the ECG and you check, there's no pulse. That is PEA. That means you're gonna continue with the arrest phase. You're gonna continue the algorithm. When you see an organized rhythm plus a pulse, you arrive at ROSC, ROSC, return of spontaneous circulation. So these are the key important. Things that I want you to remember before we further proceed with the arrest setting or the arrest phase. Let me just put it here for your reviewer. All right. So when we talk about arrest phase, you guys, are you guys overwhelmed? Relax, huh? We're just, I'm just giving you a brief, um, a complete. Uh, a brief uh, what's this scenario on what it is in the arrest phase so you will delegate these are the three things upon um, upon upon identifying that you have an unresponsive patient the BLS setting uh, 
you will start to delegate. While you're waiting for the code blue team to arrive, you'll be the compressor. Once the compre the team, the rest of the team arrive, you will stand as the team lead. And that is the time that you will delegate this five major roles, except for the, I call it five, because the five major roles involve this one, including or excluding the team lead. All right, you have your compressor, your airway, monitor, medication, and recorder. The key things that I want you to remember always in mind is that when you have a systole for the first time, you have to check the leads, confirmatory. Maybe the leads were detached. That's why you're showing a systole. And then, and then organize rhythm, assess. When you see organize rhythm for the first time, you have to do this. You have to check for pulse. Why? Because organized rhythm plus negative pulse, that is equivalent to your PEA, meaning you haven't arrived to ROSC yet. When you see organized rhythm plus pulse, that means you arrived at ROSC, ROSC, return of spontaneous circulation. You're, you're now ready to jump into the post-arrest setting, which is different dis different discussion. All right? So let's move forward. In the arrest faced in the arrest cardiac arrest algorithm we have a two pathway we have here you're going to answer the questions is it shockable shockable rhythm or non-shockable rhythm oh sorry 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 I think I would use this one. Pinapaganda ko pa kasi isa pa. So, what did I tell you? You have two pathway. You have this. Okay. I'm just trying to write nicely and neat. <laughs> so, you have here your shockable. Oh, who? Shockable rhythm. and non-shockable rhythm. Okay. Okay, doke. So, it will depend on the reading that you see on the ECG and the monitor which uh, actions you need to do. When I say shockable rhythm, this involves your Ventricular tachycardia and your negative pulse and ventricular uh, ventricular fibrillation or what we call VFib, VTAC and VFib. That is your shockable rhythm. Let me write that here. You say that the rhythm is shockable if it is what? VTAC, ventricular tachycardia, and VFib. Ventricular fibrillation. Malino tayo don. Are we clear? Uh, wait. Let me adjust myself. Shockable rhythm involves your VTAC and VFib. Let me put a highlighter here just so everybody. Okay. VTAC and VFib. You will say, we will discuss the non shockable rhythm later on. Shockable and non shockable, that means. That's the time that you will apply, uh, you will introduce a uh, defibrillator or shock or electricity to your patient. Okay? So, shockable rhythm, we have your VTAC and VFib. In the way the, the ACLS algorithm goes is that you will start with, for, v, for shockable rhythms, you will start with... High quality CPR. High quality CPR. High quality CPR involves what? This. 100 beats per minute, compression in five, in five cycles, allowing full chest recoil and minimizing interval to less than 10 seconds. The depth of your, um, what's this? The depth of your compression also matters. Two inches in an adult. All right. Okay, you will start with what? Let's say class 1. Class 2. 
to a class to b i'll explain in a bit because this is how you're gonna write it actually as the one as the recorder class one class two a class two b so once you identify that the rhythm is shockable it's either VTAC or VFib. You will now proceed with giving your high quality, high quality CPR, which I discussed earlier. What is high quality CPR? And then you will introduce what? Shock. 360 joules. And then you will give your first medication. What is the medication of choice? Epinephrine. One milligram. One milligram and then IV push. And then flush it with 20 normal saline. 20 cc normal saline. Two minutes have passed. You will now do. Two minutes have passed. You will now proceed to doing SAS. SAS stands for Stop, Analyze, Switch Rows. You see, this is the time that what the compressor and the monitor will switch rows. SAS. Two minutes pass, SAS. Stop, Analyze, and Switch Rows. You will identify what type of reading that is. Let's just say that it is now... Still under VTAC or VFib, you will go on with the shockable algorithm, which is the same thing. I will write in here oh, class one, class two. A and class 3B. Oh, sorry. Class 2B. So you will proceed with high, after you do SAS or stop, analyze, and switch row, and you identify that the patient is still under VTAC, for example, you will proceed on what? Doing that, following the shockable algorithm, and that is doing high quality CPR, giving shock. So, shock for what? 360 joules, and then giving medication. Epinephrine again, medication, epinephrine, which is. The, nor the normal, uh, the, the, the usual ACLS drug, Epi, 1 milligram, IV push. Make sure that you give it a good flushing, 20 cc, normal saline. All right. Okay. One more thing that I want you to, to take note whenever you are giving shock. Okay, listen to this. Whenever the, the monitor who's handling shock or who's handling the defib, one of the key major important things that you have to tell the team, not just your team lead, and t tell, your te tell the team and to yourself is that this phrase, clear shocking on three, one, two, three, shock delivered. This is to make sure that nobody's touching the patient or the surface or the bed, the patient in the moment or in the time that you're going to give shock. Otherwise, they're going to be shocked too. Okay, trust me. <laughs> you, you will kill somebody. <laughs> the last thing that you want to do is to add another patient or casualty. You know what I mean? So let me just write that down here. Clear everybody. Clear everybody. Shocking on three. This is why closed loop communication is very important. Shocking on three. On three. 
and then you will say one, two, three, shock delivered. Once the shock is being delivered immediately, immediately proceed to high quality CPR. Remember the one thing that we, 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 the most important role of the compressor is to making sure that they minimize the interruptions to less than 10 seconds. That is why. Okay, Doc. And then this, this algorithm of shockable rhythm, the VTAC and VFib, this will go on and on and on and on up to 20 minutes of um, 20, 15 to 20 minutes of, uh, you know, doing all of this phase and actions to your patients. In the event that the patient is still under the shockable rhythm, there are some ACLS medications that um, the doctor might give, such as amiodarone. In what cases, I will write that down here, in the event that the patient is developing what or having refractory, refractory rhythm. Refractory rhythm meaning kahit binigyan mo na siya ng siya, kahit binigyan mo na siya ng dalawang beses na doses ng epi, doses ng epi or three doses of epi, still VTAC and VVIP pa rin siya. You wanna reset the heart uh, the electrical conductivity of the heart and that is by giving um, an anti-arrhythmic uh, anti-arrhythmic drug such as amiodarone. Normally, the dose given is 300 milligrams. 300 milligrams of epinephrine uh, epinephrine of amiodarone. 300 and then 150, 150. Malinaw ba tayo doon? Malinaw na malinaw. May max dose lang kasi tayo ng amiodero na binibigay sa mga pasyente natin. So this can go on up to three cycles. So let's continue. So two minutes have passed. Two minutes. Two minutes. So what you will do is do SAS, which stands for stop, analyze, And switch role. Remember that you don't have to wait for uh, uh, two cycles. You don't have to wait for five cycles of compression until you do switching roles. You can do that anytime that the compressor feels tired. Okay, dog. So what you're gonna do? You stop. You analyze switch role. And then let's just say that the patient is still under. Let's just say, huh? That in for the purpose of this discussion, that the patient is under VTAC again. Let me switch my pen color. It's under VTAC. The reading that you have is VTAC. Or let's say VFib. What is the thing that you need to do? The next thing that you need to do is to proceed with this um, protocol again. So you will do class 1. Class 1. Which is giving high quality CPR. And then class two A, which is giving shock to your patient. In giving shock, what you will do, what you will say, what's the 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 instructions? Clear everybody shocking on three. One, two, three, shock delivered. Don't forget that. How many shocks you will give? How many um, joules of electricity? Three hundred sixty joules. And then you will proceed with the next step of this algorithm, the shockable algorithm, class 3B. The one who's handling the, the recorder, this is the way you will write it on the board. Every two minutes, you will go into prompt everybody that two minutes have passed. We need to stop, analyze, and switch role. Analyze what? The rhythm of the patient. And then you will give a medication. This is not the time that the doctor might think if it's refractory VTAC or refractory VFib to change the medication to giving amiodarone. Remember, for refractory rhythm. So you will give medication, epinephrine. That's epinephrine, 1 is to 10,000. Plus, uh, plus it 2 or 1 milligram 
plus uh, flushing it with 20cc normal saline. So basically, you guys, this is your shockable rhythm. The shockable rhythm. Which is could be VTAC and VFib. And mind you, in the arrest phase, there's four main deadly rhythms. Four only main deadly rhythms. Those are VTAC and VFib. And the next one under non-shockable rhythm is what we call your asystole. And PEA. PEA stands for Pulseless Electrical Activity. You guys following? Okay, let me change the color of this one. Para may, ano, may separation tayo. I will write it in blue. Non-shockable. Non-shockable. Okay. Put that there. So we only have your asystole and then your PEA, pulseless. Remember the, the one of the key, ah, ano daw yun? The things that I want you to remember, once you see an organized rhythm, PEA is having an organized rhythm but without pulse. That's the time that you will proceed with the non-shockable pathway. Non-shockable pathway, it's very simple, you guys. This is now the time that you will not administer shock to your patient. So here's the algorithm, how it goes. Once you identify, let's just say, in the start of the arrest phase, you identify that the patient is asystole, or say, PEA. You check, the, you check the pulse, there's no pulse. You will call it PEA. And the way you're going to do it is by this. Recorder, this is how are you going to write it. Class 1. Class Two A and class two B. What are you gonna write? You will give high quality CPR. As you notice, the CPR, the compressions, is the compressions and the medications are the two constant thing. Magbabago lang siya kung magbibigay ka ng electron shock or hindi. And then you will not give shock, no shock. Mm. Let me change. For non-shockable rhythm, kapag nakakita ka dyan ng asistole or PEA, ang tanong, magbibigay ng shock? No shock. Huwag kang bobo ka dyan. And then you give medication. Again, what is the medication of choice? Same thing. Epinephrine. Normally, the first med line of medication given is epinephrine, 1 mg, flushing it with 20 cc, normal saline. Oh, after two minutes, two minutes pass. What you will do after two minutes? You will do SAS. Huwag kakalimutan yung SAS. Which stands for Stop, Analyze, and Switch Roll. Okay. And then, let's just say, for the purpose of this discussion, you still have a non-shockable rhythm, which is, after two minutes, you identify that the patient is still under a systole or PEA. What you will do, you will proceed with the same algorithm, same approach, which is, Class 1, Class 2, 2A, and Class 3, ah, 3, sorry, Class 3, at uh, Class 2B, which is same thing. You will do high quality CPR, minimizing the interval. No shock is going to be given. And you will give epinephrine or medication to your patient. Okay, doke. 
this is also the time that you will going to during SAS, Asistole and PEA, you will going to identify or you going to reassess the patient in terms of ABC and your uh what's this? Your five uh, H and T's. The five H and T's. Remember that the hypothermia, hypovolemia, hypo irreversible causes of arrest. Hypothermia, hypovolemia, hypoxia, hyper uh, kalimia, hypokalimia, and hydrogen ion. The T's, the five T's: tension, pneumothorax, uh, cardiac tamponade, toxins. Which you you can check for any evidence of uh, um, toxicity like um, mga naga addict na pasyente, mga tusok tusok nila dyan. and thrombosis. This could involve your car cardiac thrombosis and pulmonary thrombosis. Okay, dog. All right. So two minutes have passed. Kaya magalala, magkakaroon tayo ng further discussion. Alam ko may mga tanong kayo. Two minutes have passed. What you will do, you will sass. Stop. Analyze. Switch row. Easy, di ba? And then, you identified. And like I said, this can go on and on and on until 20 cycles or 20 minutes in the event that the patient is still under the non-shockable rhythm. Okay. So, two minutes have passed. You identified that the patient is still may persistent asistole. Siyempre, nag-5Ts and uh, nag-5H and Ts ka na. Sistole ka pa rin. Okay. So, what you will do, you will continue with the non-shockable algorithm. Which is, you will give class 1. Ilagay ko siya ng ganito. I put it this way for you to remember exactly the algorithm. You want to be organized in the in, in the events like uh, somebody's arrested. Why? The last thing that you don't want to happen in these times of event is for you to be out. Uh, you don't know what to do. Like you're like, uh, you're shocked. Shock na ngayon pasyente, shock ka pa. Huwag nang ganun. So, you will proceed, ha? In the, after SAS, you identified a systole or PEA pa rin pasyente. Immediately, proceed to high-quality CPR. Huwag niyong kakalimutan yan. And then, no shock is going to be given. Uh -huh. No shock ka pa rin. Kasi a systole ka pa rin, eh. Non-shockable yun. Huwag ka mawawala. It takes practice, you guys. And then, medication. Okay. All right. So, nakailang rounds ka na yan, nakatatlo ka na yan. So, let's just say, there's some a scenario. On the third cycle of your asistole, nandito tayo sa nansyakabala, nakakita ka ng rhythm na VTAC. Nag-VTAC ang pasyente mo. What is your next thing to do? That's the time, but the question is, are you gonna stay on the uh, non-shockable phase, you, are you gonna give high-quality CPR, no shock, and medication? Or, you will proceed with your shockable algorithm, which is, uh, when you handle VTAC and VFib, which is giving high-quality CPR, giving shock for 36 joules, 360 joules, and give, giving medication. The answer to that is absolutely going towards the non-shockable or the shockable algorithm, which is this one. High-quality CPR, shock, 360 joules of shock, and then medication. Ganito naman. Paano? Let's just say that on the first um, on the first ECG reading, your baseline reading, you identified that the patient is on VFib. Okay? VFib ang pasyente mo. Nag-proceed ka sa, um, sa algorithm, high-quality CPR, nagbigay ka ng shock, you give shock, and then you give your first dose of medication. On the SAS part, on this first um, sa, uh, stop, analyze, and switch, you identify that the patient is asistole. The first thing that you will need to do, since that is the first asistole, that's the first time that you see asistole, you will check for the leads to confirm. And the leads were intact. It's in place. What you will do, you will proceed with... Are you going to proceed with shockable rhythm? Shockable rhythm algorithm? Or are you going to switch to non-shockable? 
Very good. Very good sa mga nakatama dyan. You will now proceed to the non-shockable algorithm. You will follow this. You will give high-quality CPR, you will not give shock, and you will give medication as ordered. And then, sas ulit. Sas, after two minutes have passed, stop, analyze, and switch bro. You identify that the patient is a systole. You will give high-quality CPR immediately. No shockable, no, no shock will be given. And you will proceed with your medication. So as you can see, the cardiac arrest algorithm is just a continue. It's pretty simple. It's pretty direct. Wag kang malilito. Uh, when it comes to dealing with your ECG reading, I guess if there's anything that I want you to take note is you have to be mindful of what is the rhythm that is being shown to you in the ECG monitor or in the monitor because that will determine what action you will do. If it's shock ball, definitely you will give shock 360 joules. The shakabo, these are the four deadly rhythms, you guys, that I want you to be mindful of. VTAC and VFib. Pag nakakita ka ng VTAC and VFib, automatically you will think, ah, I will give shock. Kapag nakakita ka naman, if you see a systole and PEA, you check the pulse. There's organized rhythm, but there's no pulse. That's PEA. Ah, automatically you will think, I will not give shock. I will give high-quality CPR. No shock will be given. I will give medication as ordered. Two minutes have passed. You will stop, analyze, and switch roles. SAS. You have identified that the patient is on VTAC. What you will do, you will proceed with this, the shockable algorithm, the, the protocol for uh, handling shock rhythm, VTAC and VFib. You will give high-quality CPR. You will give shock. 360 joules, you will say, clear everybody, shocking on three. One, two, three, shock delivered. Proceed with high quality CPR, and then you will prepare for your medication. Epinephrine, either be that's your first dose of epinephrine, second dose, third dose. The cycle will continue until 20, 15 to 20 minutes. It depends on the SOP of the hospital until you, until you arrive with the conclusion if the patient will already passed away or nagros kayo. Remember, kapag na-reach nyo yung ROS, the moment that you will identify that the patient achieved ROS is when, ano yung sinabi ko sa inyo, there is organized rhythm plus pulse. That's the time that you will achieve ROS. Once you achieve ROS, once this is done, you will now proceed with the post-arrest face of the ACLS. Okay, magalala kasi tatalakayin din natin 'yan. Yung post arrest na 'yon, uh, Ross. Yes or no? If it's yes, then you will proceed with the post arrest. Post arrest algorithm. Okay? Kapag walang ROS, naka-20 minutes na tayong pang-siging pangka-cardiac-cardiac arrest nyo dyan, wala pa rin organized rhythm. That's the time that the doctor will decide kung ititigil na natin yung, um, what's this, yung, uh, yung compressions and we're gonna announce code mercy sa hospital nyo kung may code mercy kayo. O yung patay na yung pasyente. Okay. But definitely, this is the summarization. I hope this one help to everyone who's going to prepare for their uh, certification for ACLS for AHA. Because basically, this is what is, um, you know, what I want you to remember whenever you think about not just getting your certification, but sa mga nagwo-work sa ICU, sa ER, sa ward, sa kahit ano pa man, this is your cardiac arrest algorithm in the simplest way, in the simplest form, in the most concise ma manner that I could possibly offer to you guys. Ayan na. You wanna take a screenshot of this? Please do so. You can do that. Definitely, I will not stop you. Um, but thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for watching. Have you learned something today about your cardiac arrest algorithm? Um, uh, I'll see you again next time for another discussion. Tulungan nyo na nga ako yung pamalitan nyo na sa Radyong Sira ang pinakabago, pinakafresh at pinakalibring nursing review centers sa balat ng YouTube. And I'll see you again next time. Have a good one.